Are your savings stagnant no matter how hard you work? Make money work for you with MIDF Invest, an easier, safer way to grow your wealth by investing in stocks and ETFs from over 6,000 U.S. companies. The bank is regulated by Securities Commission for your peace of mind. So you can keep your money safe while keeping it busy. Hi, let me show you how easy it is to buy a stock from the MIDF Invest app. To start, download the MIDF app from the Play Store or the App Store. Registering your account with us will be very easy and once your account is approved, you can click the trade button to begin your investment journey. Search for the stock that you like to buy, customize your stock buying options, tap on the place order button, and finally, tap the confirm button. And congratulations, you have purchased your first stock on the MIDF Invest app. Want to earn from some of the world's biggest companies? Let your money work abroad. With MIDF Invest, you can invest in stocks and ETFs from over 6,000 US companies, including a wide range of Sharia compliant stocks. Have questions? You can talk to our experienced happiness agents anytime. So, if your savings are still sleeping on the job, it's time to make them work a little harder. Kid, okay. Hi, and a very good evening to everyone in this webinar. Uh, I just want to wish everyone a warm welcome. And I hope that uh, you guys are doing okay. And uh, this is basically a continuation of uh, last week's webinar, uh, where we talked a little bit about ESG, right? So I would like to wish everyone uh, a warm welcome into, uh, into this webinar. And also, uh, speaking of relatively warm, quite recently, yeah, it's been, it's been um, I guess, uh, re relatively hot. So, you know, do stay hydrated. Uh, and I know that, uh, yeah, we talked last week a little bit about this on how, I guess, the global environment right now is getting more and more warmer so i think more than ever uh i guess uh circling back to our main subject i think esg is really the way to go right and why do i say that uh so we are going to do a little recap about esg if any of you guys just got into this particular webinar this week right so that you guys can get caught up and those that actually came in last week's webinar we're going to just, uh, uh, just repeat a little bit about ESG so that we all have a better understanding. So a little bit about, I guess, myself before we start. Uh, I've been in the financial industry for close to 20 years already. And I think what I want to highlight over here is that I have been a, uh, an equity analyst. And what an, an equity analyst does is that they pick stocks for fund managers for them to invest, right? So my, my, my job is really to actually pick uh, stocks with which actually has better intrinsic value. And, you know, uh, if, if you guys, you know, invest in a stock based on a lower market price and intrinsic value is much higher, this is where you guys will make a little bit of, I guess, uh, profit from your stocks, right? I think we talked about this two or three webinars ago, right? About intrinsic value and also market value. So we are slowly building your knowledge base as investors, right? Uh, that's a little bit about me. And I guess, again, you know, our house rules are as per usual. If you guys have any questions, please do ask, right? Uh, you guys can actually tell that, you know, as soon as you guys ask a question, 
definitely I will answer you guys, right? First thing. Secondly is that let's make this webinar a little bit more fun. Uh, whereby I will ask you guys some questions, right? So please do answer my questions. If not, it's going to be <laughs> a very awkward two or three seconds for myself, right? And the final thing is that uh, we have a couple of question questionnaires that we would like uh, you guys to help us uh, out with. Uh, the questionnaire really is to maybe get a feel of what we should talk about in the upcoming webinars. Uh, the whole thing of it all is that we want to help you uh, become amazing investors and when you guys uh, become amazing investors that's where you guys actually make i guess a little bit of profit from your investments right so uh again you know uh this is our weekly roundup or uh, the top stocks which actually uh, moved the most in terms of the top gainers top losers and also uh, the most active counters, right? So over here, we can see that there's this company, uh, Kirkut, right? Uh, it moved by about 28%. Crystal Biotech moved by about 23, uh, 22%. And Ion Q uh, moved by 22%. Over here, not much of, um, uh, I guess, uh, an analysis we can make, right? Uh, Crip. Cut is actually involved in, uh, I think, uh, building uh, handicraft items. Biotech is, uh, is a pharma company and INQ is a tech company uh, along with Upstart. Not much of a trend over here, but I will show you guys an amazing trend this week, which I found, right? So again, with regards to the top losers, not much of a trend. There is Icon Enterprises. It is, I think it has been going down quite significantly the past couple of weeks, right? Uh, I, I, I know I've been talking about this company, right? Aside from that, uh, Bright Health and um, yeah, and also Foot Locker. We can see that it all moved down um, uh, a, a fair bit. This week, however, uh, I have something quite interesting to share with you guys, right? If uh, you guys actually uh, uh, have been following our Telegram group, right? You would be able to see this particular idea emerging, right? And I guess uh, one of my junior analysts uh, brought this up to our attention, right? Basically, what happened this week is that if we were to look at the top movers, right, in terms of volumes, we can see that Tesla, in terms of volume, 130 million shares being traded. And if any of you guys are Tesla stockholders, you would, I guess, enjoy a little bit of an upside, I think. I think, uh, if you're not mistaken, it was about 10% on a week on week, right? And the whole thing of it all is that uh, Tesla actually uh, announced that they want to make cheaper cars, right? Cheaper cars, right? And alongside with that, uh, remember what I talked a little bit about. Uh, there's this stock, which I talked uh, two weeks ago, and the name of the stock is NEO, right? Uh, if any of you guys actually entered NEO, I would like to maybe you know, give you guys a congratulations. Uh, I, think, I think the stock also did move up uh, uh, a little bit also, right? With regards to NIO, uh, NIO actually, it's, it's more of a sentiment play, lah, basically, right? When Tesla goes up, people are thinking, hey, how, how do I get into the EV uh, space, right? And they would just buy into another EV company, lah, and NIO is one of the other EV companies. So what tends to happen is that it's a sentiment play. Lah. If one stock goes up, right, everyone will try to chase that stock. And then if they, if they think that particular stock is too late to chase, they will chase another stock within the EV industry. So right over here, we actually, you know, I guess leveled up a little bit. We talked a little bit, uh, right now, we talked a little bit about how news drive the stock for companies. On top of that, how sometimes sentiment drive the stock price, right? And sometimes it, uh, when one stock does A, when one stock does good, right? Say stock A does good. Sometimes for no apparent reason, stock B will move up, right? Fundamentally speaking, in terms of earnings, nothing changed except this is a sentiment play. Right? Okay. So anyway, uh, recapping from last week's uh, webinar, I'm going to break it out into three, right? First thing, we're going to talk a little bit about what is ESG, right? Second thing, we're going to talk a, a little bit about is why should we even look at ESG? Final thing we're going to talk about, I think, which is the highlight of this uh, webinar 
is what to invest in uh, in this uh, space, right? So I have actually picked out one of my favorite uh, investment vehicles, right? So uh, yeah, alongside with that, I'm going to just highlight other stocks within, uh, within the ESG space, right? So right, a little bit about ESG, just to recap. Uh, ESG stands for, I guess, it's an acronym which stands for environment, right? Over here, we want to invest in companies that or uh, companies which actually uh, does good to the environment, right? Uh, this could be air and also the water, right? So companies which actually uh, don't pollute the water and also the air, right? Uh, they are environmentally friendly. And therefore, in terms of the ESG filter, they will probably succeed in the E filter of the ESG, right? So companies that do not pollute is, I guess, would fall into the ESG filter, right? Second thing that we're going to look at is S, right? And what does S stand for, right? This is where companies uh, are very social conscious, right? Uh, companies that uh, don't do things like, uh, you know, they, uh, they discriminate labor and they, they, they violate human rights, basically, right? And, you know, um, I think uh, an example of this is during the 80s and 90s, right? Uh, there was this particular news of this footwear company that employs, uh, I guess, uh, child labor, right? So uh, right now with the ESG movement, right? You can see that more and more companies are more humane to their staff members, right? And one of the examples I gave last week was, you know, uh, right now we can see that companies, if they have to work in an estate, right? They will do things like provide healthcare. They will also provide things like schools for their kids. So right now, more and more, we can see that companies are more conscientious about their staff, right? And the final uh, element for ESG is the governance, right? This is where uh, companies are moving more and more towards transparency. I think one of the uh, one of the examples I gave uh, with regard to transparency is, you know, if you were to look at the big blue companies or the big blue chips, right? They tend to just talk about or they, they, they I guess, they disclose a lot of things like, you know, uh, uh, shareholders, remuner uh, uh, directors remuneration, you know, uh, related party transaction. So a lot of these things are, um, I guess, uh, disclosed, right? Uh, companies that somewhat shady, right? I gave an example of basically, like, it's like Enron, right? And locally, we also had an oil and gas company also, right? Uh, so this is a little bit about ESG, right? So right now, okay, just a little activity, right? Uh, hope you guys are all, you know, uh, uh, ready to, to answer a couple of questions, right? Uh, so first question, right? in terms of the E elements, right? If a company is involved in renewable energy, is it an ESG company? Just type Y for yes and N for no. So in terms of the ESG filter, if a company is involved in the renewable energy space, is this an ESG company? Correct. Correct. Ah, oh, you guys are paying attention. Great. So, uh, if a company is involved in renewable energy, it is, uh, it is an ESG company, lah. Basically, it actually takes care of the environment, right? Next thing, if a company say is involved in some random oil spill, <laughs> right? I think this is a given. Is it ESG? Right, right. So you guys get the point, right? Next thing is, uh, in terms of social, right? If a company is involved in child labor, correct? And if a company uh, provides housing to their staff, is it an ESG-friendly company? Correct. Finally, a company which is transparent and non-transparent. Okay, so everyone gets the point, right? So let's move on to the next one, right? Another pop quiz, right? Does this look like an environmentally friendly environment, a uh, working environment? Correct. So a lot of government companies, especially located somewhere within India and Bangladesh, right? Uh, what they do is they, they are involved in government, government practices which actually employs maybe uh, people which are below a certain age. So they, they still employ 
uh, children to work in their factories and also uh, they tend to pollute a fair bit uh, of the water, right? So that's one of the reasons why I think ESG is important more than ever. Okay, is this considered ESG? <laughs> right, right. Okay, so you guys, you guys are getting the hang of it. Good, good. Okay, so why choose ESG, right? I think uh, I actually gave this picture uh, last week, right? And this is a little bit about global warming, right? We can see that right now, right? Even today, even the past couple of months, we can even feel that Malaysia is actually getting really hot, right? And I think this week also, we could. This actually happened last year. I don't know whether you guys uh, remember or not. This was in the Klang Valley, right? A lot of cars were macam tenggelam dalam air dekat parking lot, kan? A lot of cars tenggelam, right? And a lot of uh, damage, right? And again, uh, global warming. And as we know, Jakarta is also sinking. And I think the most relatable and the most recent example is quite recently, if you were to look within Klang Valley, right, or within uh, within Kuala Lumpur, uh, there's this video circulating about how Pavilion, they had this, um, this um, a storm, right? It was so bad. People were just running for cover and what happened was glass just shattered and a lot of people that, you know, all these guys yang buka gerai kan, their gerai just flew. It was truly a scary sight, right? So I think right now, more than ever, right, if we want to make a difference and if we want to do good while investing and while making money, I think ESG is it's, it's something that we should maybe consider every time when we invest, right? So I think the second reason why ESG is gaining popularity is that, uh, as I mentioned uh, last week, a lot of big funds right now are moving towards the ESG space, right? And in fact, uh, in terms of the asset under management for ESG, we can see that the amount of uh, funds, right, being, being uh, ESG compliant funds, the AUM or the asset under management has already surpassed the 1 trillion mark in terms of ringgit. So right now, more and more, if asset owners, right, if all of these guys, they have money, right, and they tell their fund managers, you know, I want to invest in ESG compliant companies. What will happen, and this is amazing, I gave a couple of examples last week, right, is that corporates right now are incentivized to do better. They are doing a lot of things which are transparent. They take care of their labor. Uh, they also have healthcare and also they provide uh, education for their staff if they live in a particular, uh, say, a particular ladang or estate, right? So more and more, right, if there is a movement towards ESG, corporates are incentivized to, uh, to also be more ESG compliant. And as more and more corporates become more ESG compliant, what's happening is that Malaysia as a whole, right? Or the global environment as a whole, we are moving more towards being a more responsible citizen. And also things like global warming and everything, right? We are, we are actually voting with our investment ringgit or in our investment dollar, right? So I think, I think honestly, this is an amazing movement, right? So, and I am so happy to actually even bring this subject to, to everyone, right? So at least we all can make a difference while investing, right? So I think right now, uh, for this week, right, I'm going to talk a little bit about who picks ESG stocks and which ESG stocks are good ESG stocks, right? So how do does the industry even pick ESG stocks, right? So they have... Uh, companies, right? And these are index providers, right? And these in index providers will talk to the management of these companies, right? They will talk to the management of the companies. They will, they will read the news of, of these companies. And on top of that, they will look at industrial practices that this company, um, I guess, uh, does on a daily basis, right? So based on these three factors, news, talking to management and looking at their industrial practices, right? MSCI and FTSE, 
will rate these companies whether they are ESG co compliant or not. And remember what I said, environment, social, and also governance, right? So right now, there are these two uh, data providers, uh, MSCI and also FTSE. And in fact, uh, these are big, uh, big index providers also within the global market, right? Uh, and in Malaysia, we, uh, we have the FTSE Bursa Malaysia, right? So even us also, we have FTSE to help us with our uh, indices. Another company which also does ESG research, right? Are these companies, right? Uh, they have the MSCI ESG research. These are research houses which actually disseminates information for us uh, shareholders, right? Uh, another thing is Sustainalytics, right? Uh, this is another company. So every once in a while, what they do is like, you know, like analysts, right? So they will actually look at all these companies. They try to figure out which is an ESG or which is a good ESG compliant company, right? And then they will just maybe uh, write a couple of uh, articles just to increase the awareness uh, amongst the retail clients and also the institutional clients, right? And even Bloomberg, they have an ESG data service. So right now, there is a very big movement, right? Uh, we can see that big funds are moving in towards the ESG space. On top of that, in terms of awareness, we can see that uh, even, even in this particular webinar, I'm actually trying to increase the awareness for ESG, right? And I truly believe everyone can make a small little difference. And if we all make the positive steps, right? We all can make a better country, right? Right, so uh, over here, uh, a, I would like to maybe talk a little bit about our web app, right? If you have not uh, tested the web app, you know, this is the QR code for you to test our web app. There are a couple of really amazing features in the web app, right? Uh, but do try it out first, right? And if you guys have any questions, you know, my happiness agents are very happy to answer you guys, right? That and also remember another thing which I uh, talked a, a lot earlier during the webinar, which is do join our Telegram channel, right? On Telegram, you can search MIDF Invest, right? From there, you will see a blue logo with the, you know, the squiggly signs, right? That is our uh, channel, right? In that channel, every day, we will uh, update you with the, the latest news with regards to the market. And as I mentioned quite early a while ago, that Tesla news, I I'm actually really proud to say that one of our junior analysts found that particular uh, news, uh, news flow. And then, you know, if we are early to take action, right, that's where we can get a small little gain in our portfolio, right? So analysis on stocks, we, which are ESG, right? Again, I'm saving the best for uh, a bit later, right? So these are the stocks which we found that are ESG compliant. And the energy over here, which I like to give is uh, two players, right? Uh, if we were to look at a company based on their PE ratios, okay, how do you find a really good stock, right? So what are the, the indicators that we use, right? As, uh, as value investors. So the hint over here, PE ratio, what else? Dividend yields. What else? Price to book, right? These are the most common uh, ratios that we use, lah, right? So based on that, right, we will look at all of these fundamental, um, fundamental data. We will see whether the company is undervalued, right? If a company is undervalued, this is where we buy the company, hoping that the company would correct uh, as time goes on, right? And this is the data that we see over here under strong buy, buy, hold, sell, strong sell, right? These are the data which uh, a lot of uh, equity analysts, right? After looking at all the data, they will actually have an opinion on that particular stock, right? So this is the first filter. Analogy over here is that, uh, um, you know, if you look at the fundamentals, it's basically a good player, right? This good player can actually help you win games, basically, especially if you play any organized sports. But a player with good sportsmanship, the energy over here is, uh, the ESG rating, right? They do good, right? They do good, right? And over here, we can see the ESG ratings, right? So how we can read this is that Verizon 
has a good ESG rating. There's double A ESG rating, right? But in terms of whether one should buy, hold or sell, we can see there is a strong inclination towards hold. And why is this, right? Basically, Verizon is just like a, a telco company, right? And if we were to look at telco companies in Malaysia, like Digi or Cellcom, they give or Digi Cellcom, right? Right now, this merge. What they do is that, you know, in terms of growth, not so much of growth, right? Or in terms of upside, not so, not so much of upside, right? Especially among the telco comp uh, players. But they give good dividends. So therefore, even though this is a good ESG company, but in terms of what the, 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 the analysts are saying, they said maybe hold this stock, right? Eh, maybe not buy this stock, right? And why do you want to hold the stock? It's because of dividends, right? So this is like a, a, a player with really good sportsmanship, but you know, not, it's not the best player in the field, right? So if we were to look at Cisco, also the same story, there is a stronger in inclination towards hold, right? And the ESG rating is double A, right? So if you want to get like the superstar players, you know, which is excellent, really good, help you win games at the same time, have really good sportsmanship, right? We can actually see stocks like Microsoft, right? But in terms of upside, not much of an upside is about 3.14%, right? So I hope that we all get this analogy, basically, right? I'm trying to make, break it down into very simplistic terms, though. So uh, over here, uh, I always talk about this again and again, right? About uh, sometimes, you know, buying a single stock is risky, right? We don't want to, to put our retirement money or we don't want to put our, our, our life savings into one stock, right? And uh, the next day, the stock actually drops by 20%, right? You know, there's nothing worse than seeing, I guess, our, our life savings uh, moving down by 10 or 20%, right? And the, the, the key over here, and even Warren Buffett talks about this quite a fair bit, is diversification. And the best way to diversify is to enter ETFs, right? So over here, we can see that uh, the, the, the ETF over here, there's, there's a single A rating. But in terms of target price, right, there's not much of analysts covering uh, ETFs, basically, right? So that's one of the reasons why it's all relatively uh, blank, right? And I think to maybe talk about my favorite, um, I guess, uh, investment, lah, basically, right? Is this particular ETF, right? Uh, it's uh, the key symbol is ICLN. ICLN, right? So when I was doing a little research on this overall space this past two weeks, right? I actually was uh, very pleasantly surprised lah, that there is a very big movement towards uh, moving away from uh, very dirty uh, dirty fuel, fossil fuel, or uh, moving away from dirty energy, lah, like coal, you know, uh, that pollutes the world, right? And there is a strong demand or a strong push or a strong pull factor towards clean energy, right? And during the past couple of years, we can see that clean energy has been growing by fourfolds this past couple of years. It's very well documented on, on the internet, right? If you guys would like to read it, you can actually Google this, right? Uh, so this is what I found uh, during this past two weeks, right? Uh, this, uh, this um, I guess, ETF by the ticker symbol ICLN. Price is about 1865, right? Even though they actually had a very good story behind it, right? Uh, I would like to, I guess, give a disclaimer, lah. Um, you know, I, I'm not saying a buy, hold or sell on this particular uh, ETF, right? Unlike the past couple of weeks. Uh, I'm not for this because I only did a, a, a little research on, on this particular ETF, right? I just did like a broad-based thing. I was like, hmm, this is very interesting. But, you know, uh, for an analyst to form an opinion, you need to actually really, really dig into it. Maybe uh, one or two months worth of work, uh, basically, right? So two weeks, not enough for me to, to give a, 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 a view. But I just wanted to share with you an interesting uh, finding which I found, uh, right? Which is renewable energy. More and more people are moving towards it and it is a 
high growth sector, basically, right? So if you are looking towards it, maybe this is one of the ETFs you may want to look at, right? So I guess, uh, I think to, I guess, uh, wrap everything up, right? I am going to talk a little bit more about maybe good players, right? But they are not so ESG compliant, right? Uh, over here, why I actually want to bring this up is if you look at the, the, the stock NEO, right? If any of you guys followed my webinar two weeks ago, right? Again, if there's any questions, please do ask, right? So uh, at least, you know, I can actually answer the, the, the questions while I'm doing uh, the webinar, right? So anyway, uh, basically two weeks ago, I talked a little bit about NEO, why I like that stock. Uh, it, it has the EV play. And I think beyond that, they actually have a very big presence over in China. And as we know, China, the wealth effect, right? A lot of uh, car companies are, uh, want to go to China, but since NIO is an incumbent, right? So they actually have the upper hand. They understand the industry. They understand the markets a little bit better than uh, foreign companies going into China, right? So um, aside from that, there's this company called Raycat, right? Uh, they do drones. And why I like drones, right? is I can see more and more of uh, uh, farming industry really needs to be more precise, you know, and they call this precision farming, right? And uh, moving ahead, right? If uh, uh, I think if farmers want to be more precise, right? They need to actually get drones and Redcat is one of them. Rocket Labs, they are involved uh, with regards to rockets, right? But in terms of buy and hold, right? I only see one buy for Redcat. So I'm not too convinced, right? And I see for Rocket Lab, you know, again, I'm a very conservative in, uh, investor, even though I see, uh, you know, upsides of 400% and 78%. If I only see one or two uh, buy calls, you know, I'll, I'll be a bit cautious, right? Uh, Neo, on the other hand, there are about 21 uh, people that says buy and uh, there's quite an okay upside, right? So this is a little bit about these companies, right? And with that, I I think it's nine o'clock already, right? So thank you so much for answering the questions uh, during during the webinar. Uh, if not, I think I'll be maybe talking to myself, right? Quite a fair bit. But uh, that being said, right? If uh, I'll just wait for a couple of seconds, should there be any questions, right? While waiting for questions, you know, uh, there's this particular QR code, right? For you to scan, should you have any feedback for us with regards to the webinar? If you think it's too short, do tell us. If you want me to cover any new subjects, do tell me, right? And in fact, this ESG was one of the ideas I got from one of the earlier webinars, right? So someone actually asked me questions on ESG, right? And I still remembered, I think two weeks ago, someone actually asked me how to stock pick using the uh, fundamental analysis, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm actually preparing the the uh, the uh, uh, materials for that. I think we're going to do it maybe next month, right? I think next week, we're going to do Sharia investing, right? And Sharia investing, I think, uh, uh, is another ethical filter that one, one would put before picking stocks, right? And I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, Sharia, what is a halal stock, what's non-halal, right? Most, of, most times when we hear this, this word Sharia, we don't know what it really means, right? So I'm going to break it down for everyone over here. So I don't see that many questions, right? Uh, and the time right now is uh, 90, uh, I guess, 901, I guess. So again, uh, what I'd like to say before I end this webinar is that, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we have a Telegram. Do join our Telegram. Uh, and, you know, the faster you get your information, the faster you can trade. And when the faster you can trade, you can actually take uh, positions much quicker before the, the stock really uh, shoots up, basically, right? That's the first thing. Second thing I'd like to say is, you know, I cannot be any happier covering ESG subjects. Uh, you know, looking around at Malaysia, looking at how hot it is, right? Looking at the reboot, the cut up pavilion. You know, I'm just like thinking to myself, wow, you know, how extreme weather right now. It's 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 really a, a reality right now, right? And you know, we don't know whether there's gonna be any more floods moving moving forward. But what little we can do as investors is we can do good while you're investing in ESG stocks, right? So with that, thank you so very much. You guys have been an awesome audience. Hope to see you guys very, very soon next week, right? Uh, with that, take care and see you guys very soon.